Hey guys, this is Misty from The Book Rat, and today I'm going to do a quick review of Bumped by Meg McCafferty. And I know that I'm blending in with my purple kitchen wall, and I'm sorry, but the kitchen gets the best light, so I'm just going to be a floating white blob in purple. Alright, so briefly, Bumped is a satire slash dystopia about a world where um, humans lose the ability to procreate due to a virus um, when they hit adulthood, for whatever reason that's when it kicks in. Um, so teenagers are basically encouraged to have babies. <laughs> They're encouraged to just go crazy, have lots of sex, and make lots of babies. And some are starting to go pro and sell those babies and be paid to get knocked up, basically. Um, you can find more out about the book and I will link to it, but that's the general idea. And if you're asking yourself why, one of the characters says it kind of perfectly. Um, she says, for my future, so I can pay for a decent college without having to take out a quarter million dollars in loans, so I can get a decent job and make decent money, so when I'm old enough I can afford to pay a high school girl like me to push out a preg of my own someday. So that's the idea. This is kind of a weird one for me, and I'm not sure whether I want to recommend it or not because I'm not sure how well the whole satire and dystopia thing worked. Satire, it has to be, you're walking a really fine line with satire, and there were times that it was genuinely funny, and times that it did kind of make you question society, which satire should do and dystopia should do. A lot of the times, though, it just felt like kind of an over-the-top personal crusade a little bit, and it also made me really uncomfortable, and this is weird. Okay, I'm not a prude at all. Um, but some of the things that were said and just the way it's all done, I was just, I actually said you aloud a couple times. All of these people in the book that are getting pregnant are under 16. Well, 117, I take that back. He's not getting pregnant though because he's a man. But um, it's aimed at really young kids, this whole society. There are fake pregnancy bumps that 12 and 13 year olds buy and wear because it's fashionable to be pregnant at 12 or 13. Um, it's kind of creepy. And adults are the ones that are encouraging this. So it sort of starts to get this like pervy aspect to it that really made me uncomfortable. Um, also the language. There are a lot of boner jokes. I've never seen the word boner used so much in my life. That was strange for me. Um, and cum jokes. There is basically you're either an incubator or you're a stud depending on your sex. So, and you ha and you have to be like decent, I mean it's like a pedigree thing, you're thoroughbreds, you're tested, it's genetics, all that stuff. So they're talking about the best male studs and they call them hunka spunks, like just little things like that and if you're not familiar, spunk is a euphemism for jizz. Um, just kind of gross, you know, erection perfection. They sing songs, like there's one that says, um, it's human nature for me to sperm in each Like, it's just <laughs> really weird to read. And the whole time I was reading it, I never really knew which side of the fence I fell on because I was just like, sometimes it's funny and sometimes I was like, ugh. And I don't know if that was intentional or not. The funny thing is, as I kind of was finishing it up, I started to think, this makes me uncomfortable as an adult, which makes me think it might be perfect for teens. You know? They can kind of they're looking for that in a way and the kind of boundary pushing and gross out factor and that sort of humor I think would really go over well with teens so most of the time when people say as an adult you're not the right audience for it I disagree I think good writing is good writing but I think this is one of those times where teens probably would appreciate this more than an adult um, but it was weird. I don't know still whether I want to recommend this to people or not. It does make you kind of uncomfortable, which is a good thing given the topic. I don't know that it does it in the best ways. Um, and I don't know that the story is the best necessarily. The characters can be a little cliche. Um, and it is a little predictable. It's about twins and they were split up at birth. And one is a professional incubator. The other was raised in like this crazy religious community and so there's all this blah 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 with them. 
Um, so it's predictable from that standpoint, and I think that is part of why I'm holding back recommending it to people. But I think there are going to be people that are going to love it and people that are going to hate it. One thing I was thinking, and I actually made notes when I was reading this, this is going to get banned. <laughs> There's just no way. There is this crazy intermingling of sex and religion in it, and this is coming from an atheist, okay? So this is, I'm not offended by it. But I see where people are going to flip their lids over this. So there will be things like, there was a little phrase, I think it was on someone's t-shirt or something, that was, why save yourself when you can save the world, which, it's propaganda slogans like that, those make sense. And that one's kind of um, a moderate one, but let me see if I can find the second excerpt. Okay, so the religious girl has met the number one erection perfection John Doe, and I just... Ugh, I had issues with John Doe and the whole storyline. It was just creepy. But, um, basically, he thinks that she's her sister and that he's being paid to sleep with her. And so he's trying to get her in bed. She thinks he's beautiful <laughs> and that maybe he's part of her mission, her godly mission. And she starts singing to him. This is what she sings. Love on me, love in me, love through me, Jesus. And she says she sings it like she never has before. And then she says, about her singing, I feel a tiny flame sparking deep inside me, the flicker of a single lit match in a place I'm not supposed to think about. And as I keep singing and strumming, that light burns hotter and brighter and spreads its warmth up and out and throughout my entire body. And I sing and sing and sing until that tiny torch has set my entire body ablaze, an undoubtable conflagration of passion. She's singing about Jesus, to a sex stud that she compares to Jesus as he's trying to get her in bed. This goes on throughout. Every time she is with him or she comes into the picture pretty much, there's this blending of very deeply religious imagery and very, very provocative sexual imagery. This is going to have some people up in arms, I guarantee you people are going to flip their shit. <laughs> so be aware of that. If you do decide you want to read this, you think it sounds interesting. If you are religious and easily offended by things like that, just don't. Just save yourself the headache because it goes on throughout and it is a little shocking sometimes, even for me. <laughs> so just so you know. Um, I think there was one other excerpt I wanted to share with you too. Oh yeah, this is just an adult, um, he's basically an agent that is the one that gets people their money for pregging, and he's talking about John Doe, the guy that the other twin compares to, Jesus, and he says, um, getting into a number one college will be a no-brainer after John Doe gets into you, and this is an adult talking to a 16-year-old, and it just... It's, that's where I mean like that pervy kind of pedophile thing comes in that was kind of had my skin crawling sometimes. There's also a drug they take called Tosin and their slogan is Tosin will open you up and it's basically like pop this and you'll be wet for whatever guy. I mean it's just kind of creepy throughout. All that said I think there are people who are going to love this and I think the fact that it is kind of button pushing and makes you uncomfortable is maybe what she was going for. I don't know that she always hit the mark with the satire and the dystopia. Um, I think the language is another thing that's really going to throw people off and I don't just mean the sort of sexual language, I mean like just in general. There's a lot of really R-I-L-L-Y um, and for serious, for seriously. All kinds of slogans, all kinds of just over the top, um, I suppose it's what she's going for with like a futuristic sort of consumerism ad campaign-y lifestyle that has spilled over into the language. Um, and other people have done this. I think um, M.T. Anderson, the book Feed, did this really well. The language is almost unintelligible in the beginning, and as you go along, it makes perfect sense and it's a great statement on consumerism. This kind of, I think, borrows from that a little bit and I don't know that she does it quite as well. It can get really obnoxious, but it does get easier as you're going along. 
but um, it's certainly an interesting book. I don't think that I will forget it. I don't know whether I'm going to read the second, and that is bringing me to my last point. Can anyone write a goddamn standalone book? Honestly. This one just ends in the middle of a scene. It's just a bizarre ending. I really think this would have been stronger if she had just had the whole book written. Just one book, one solid statement, lay it all out. I don't care if it's a thicker book, if it finishes the story, ties it all up, makes sense, tells me where you're going. Ending it where it ended was just like she had a full story and someone went along and was like, this is book one, this is paycheck two, this is paycheck three. Um, and I just am not a fan of that. I think the publishing industry needs to kind of knock it off already. But I'm sure a lot of people are going to go back and buy multiple books, which is why they do this. I still think it would have been much, much stronger, though, if it was just complete its own thing. Um, I read an arc. I should say that. So things could change. Maybe I would like the final version a little better. But um, as it is now, this is a very hesitant recommendation for those who aren't bothered by any of the things that I just said and think that they're going to like this. If you like satire, then this would probably be the thing for you. Um, if you don't like satire, or this is going to be like your first introduction to satire or dystopia, I wouldn't bother because things like this can tend to read serious when they're not, and that's where it gets really uncomfortable and really gross, and that's where a lot of the bannings are going to come from because I can see them coming already. So that's it. That's all I have to say. Um, it was a little gross, but interesting quick read nonetheless. So that was Bumped by Megan McCafferty and it comes out at the end of April. See ya!